Do. Um, Linda and Tom here. Um, Hi. Invite your followers, please. Uh, and if you feel you like what you're t uh, hearing, like uh, I think it's probably Ginny is already doing. Hi, Malin. Um, tap the screen for hearts, and um, we're going to get going here. Hi, J Hi, Gay. Um, I'll try to answer your questions as best I can, and um, if I don't catch any um, any questions, I'll try and get back with you on Twitter. That's that's my husband, Tom. Tom, that's Malin. He's he's a beatboxer. He's teaching me how to beatbox. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to try it now. Not even. Don't even say. Please try. <laughs> now we're not experts in wine. Um, uh, to invite followers, you uh, hit the number of people in the broadcast, Gay, and um, it'll bring up a, a thing that says invite your followers. Nearly missed me. No. Hi, Victoria. Um, now, we're not experts in wine. We, uh, we used to own a wine store, which is where we got our passion for wines. Uh, when we closed, I started my uh, nonprofit organization, Connie Caps. Uh, Connie Caps provides cancer patients with stylish custom order knit hats. And Connie Caps is run entirely on donations. And if you shop at Amazon.com, which, which I'm sure um, most of you do, switch to Amazon Smile, which is the same thing. You don't need to change your account information or anything. It's just um, smile.amazon.com. Uh, yeah. And just uh, choose um, Connie Caps as your preferred uh, uh, charity. And every time you shop, Connie Caps gets a tiny donation. And it doesn't raise your price at all. It, no. it costs Amazon money, which is yeah. okay. <laughs> and, and it helps me, so so that's good. So, But you didn't come here to, t to listen about that. You came here to hear us talk about the wines. First, I'm going to talk about the Hoopla, the Mutt Cabernet Sauvignon 2012. Um, is, do we have a bad connection? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you, you should be able to... Um, Get. I can fix that. Tom's going to fix that. He's an IT guy. He can fix it. He's that good. That's what he does for a living. Hold tight, people, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what we can uh, we can do. I think he might have just. Uh, yeah, he he's an IT guy, and I think he just fixed our router. Yeah, that's the Jeopardy theme song. <laughs> Jeopardy, if in case you're not uh, familiar, Jenny, uh, Jeopardy is a, um, is a uh, game show here in the States, and that's their theme song. Okay, better now? We're, um, we're going to start with Hoopla Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're good. We're good. Hoopla Cabernet Sauvignon The Mutt, 2012. Um, now, I'm going to be referring to my notes here, so bear with me. Um, this is from Napa Valley. It's a 2012 vintage. It's 98% Cabernet, 2% uh, Merlot. And there will be a text sheet for this wine on the, um, on the website, conniecaps.org slash periscope. And if you want to email me with any questions, don't let the internet get between me and wine. Oh, no, 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 no. We can't let that happen. Um, and if you want to ask me any questions, email me, um, lmb at conniecaps.org, or tweet me, um, conniecaps is my handle. Um, now, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon is one of the most widely recognized uh, red wine varietals, and um, it's grown in nearly every major wine-producing country um, among diverse spectrum of climates from Canada to Lebanon. So almost everybody makes a Cabernet. Um, it's one of the five red Bordeaux varietals. Um, the other four, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Malbec, and Petit Verdot. Tom, I've got wine glasses right here. Oh, for the dessert wine. Duh. Okay. Um, despite its being predominant in the industry, it's a relatively new blend, new uh, wine grape. Um, it came about, um, it was a chance cr uh, crossing of Cabernet Franc and Sauvignon Blanc, so a red wine and a white wine, um, during the 17th century in southwestern France. Um, let's give this a taste. 
I actually uh, found this wine at a wine tasting in Florida where I unfortunately spend most of my time. Unfortunately, because Linda's here in Vermont and I'd much rather be here with her. Uh, and the, uh, the winery had two representatives there who happened to be the winemaker's two daughters who uh, both work for the winery. So I got to talk to them a good bit about the, the wines. We get lots of Australian wines here. Oh, yeah. I love Australian wines. Big Australian wines fan. Only thing better than wine is Linda. Oh, <laughs> she's my adopted daughter, and you I pay her to say wine that. And Linda. Yeah, <laughs> that's so sweet. Okay, here we go. Linda and Tom romance. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheers. 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 <laughs> now, the, um, the classic profile of uh, Cab tends to be full-bodied wines with high tannins and a noticeable acidity that contributes to the wine's aging potential. I'm sorry. I know. I wish I could share it with you guys. Really, I do. That's... It's... For its Ooh. age, it's, yes, it's, it's Napa. It's not real tight. It's it's got good body, a lot of juice. I am um, very familiar with McLaren Vale. Oh yes, we, Shervington. We love McLaren. Shervington is one of my favorite McLaren Vale wines. Oh my goodness, yes, we love McLaren Vale. But it's got Sorry. it's got a good streak of acidity down the sides of your tongue and and uh, nice grippy tannins. If you're if you're not used to um, a, a wine like Cabernet, you're gonna you're going to live, feel a little puckery from that wine, and, yeah. and of course we've got the perfect remedy for that here. Yes. If you remember, if if you are a regular to my shows, you remember in one of my previous broadcasts, I mentioned something about... Hi, Tammy. Tammy just joined. Uh, um, I mentioned something about the fact that... Hi, Robert. The um, people who don't like that the high tannins or the acidity... Um, Foods like uh, that are high in protein and fat can cut that acidity and the tannins and make it a little bit more palatable. And that's where the cheese comes in. We've got cheeses, people. Cheeses from Vermont and one from New York. And I'm going to let Tom talk about the cheeses because he's the cheese guy. If you like cheese, Vermont is the Meat place to cheese, be. Yes. There are, there are uh, so many artisanal cheesemakers here in Vermont, you wouldn't believe. They, they uh, do cow's milk, they do goat's milk, they do sheep's milk, they do blends. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of the cheeses we have are uh, um, goat milk cheeses, just happens that that's what we have this time. We have a blue cheese, which we'll talk about later. Um, we have cheeses like this um, Cheese of the Spring, which is, uh, you can see, has a rind on it, and that, that rind uh, is a sign that this was an aged cheese. It was, it was stored in a cave. It's a washed rind cheese, which means that they actually scrub the cheese to, to take off the mold and bacteria that grows on the outside. So you don't get a real thick layer of it, but what you get from the mold and bacteria is flavor, and they use uh, specific strains of molds and bacteria to get the flavor that they want from the cheese. So you can totally eat the rind. The rind is yeah, safe to it's, eat. Yeah. It's all edible. Yeah, the mold is a good part. You're, yeah. you're good with it. What happens when you eat a, a meat or cheese with, with wine that's very tannic is that the, uh, the fat and protein molecules in the, the meat or cheese kind of coat the inside of your mouth, and they, they offer a little bit of resistance to the tannins. So the wine is going to have a much smoother feel. You won't get as much of the, the acidity. Oh. You won't get as much of that puckery feel. Hmm. It's so nice and smooth, and, and it's almost buttery tasting. That's nice. That's the semi-soft, very mild. And this is uh, vegetable rennet, so this is a vegetarian-friendly cheese. <laughs> I'm glad, too, Julia. I only wish you were here to, to, to taste it, because it really is good. Now, we've also got... from Blue Ledge Farm, a cheese called La Luna, and you can see that this is in a wax, it's a, a beeswax, and so there's no bacteria or mold on the, on the edge of this. The aging is just the, uh, the ingredients in the cheese kind of mellowing as the cheese ages, and this is <laughs> probably only about 
30 to 60 days old. It's still a fairly soft cheese. Here you go. Oh, thank you. And uh, this is going to be, again, a fairly mild. This one is, is goat's milk cheese, so you get a little bit of that goat flavor coming through on this. Nah. Mmm. Well, that's lovely. Yeah, it is. Goat milk is a little higher in fat than cow's milk, and um, it has kind of that funk to it that, that if you're not used to goat cheese, it takes a little getting used to. Uh, um, I remember the first time I tried it, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I've really acquired a taste for it since then. Now the you next one... You can only eat goat's cheese. So the, Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, it's prevalent here. I mean, you yeah. see goat cheese everywhere here. Yeah, m most of the producers do at least one or two goat cheeses in addition mm -hmm. to the cow's milk cheese. This one, uh, which you can see, is called Northern Sp from Northern Spy Farms, and it's called Goat Song Tum. Tum is a cheese that's that's formed into uh, a small wheel, and it is cave aged. And this one doesn't get scrubbed quite as much as as some of the others do, so there's more of a build up. On the, you can see the rind there, and and again, these are beneficial bacteria and molds that they add to the cheese um, to grow on the surface to add flavor to the cheese. And this is a little harder cheese. Uh, we like to um, to grate this up onto steamed broccoli. Oh ah, yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's real good. And you can see this one has a little bit of intrusion of growth. That's fine. You can you can cut that out. You can actually eat the rind, it won't hurt you, but when you get those intrusions, you get a lot of, of kind of dry, powdery stuff, but, but the, the cheese that's right around those intrusions is just full of flavor from all that growth. Yeah. This is good. Mm. There's a, um, a really nice cheese shop in Arlington, Vermont, where we go to all the time, and the, the owner knows us by, by name, he knows what we like, and whenever we go there, he always gives us something, like, take this, take this, or uh, let me give you this, try this, and it's, it's wonderful to build up a relationship with the proprietors because not only do they appreciate your business, they show it, you know. Oh, like any goat cheese you recommend with that amazing goat noise. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> we can talk about goat videos on the internet later. Oh, gosh. Now, this, we're going a completely different direction with this. This is, again, a, a, a goat cheese from Blue Ledge Farm. It's called Lake's Edge. There's the label. And you can see this one has what's called a bloomy rind, like a brie or a camembert. And it also has a line of vegetable ash through the center of it. And this is this is wonderful stuff. Can First, I get some crackers? For yeah, this? I get some crackers for this one. This goes really great on crackers because it's kind of it's a double cream cheese, so uh, it's it's very very smooth and very soft, and it picks up flavor both from the mold that grows on the rind, which is entirely edible, and from the uh, the ash that they put. And again, this is aged for just a, a relatively short period of time, just enough to develop the flavor. And designed to be eaten fresh. It, uh, if you keep this too long, particularly wrapped in plastic, that, that bloom is going to start to to get a bacterial growth on it. And that won't hurt you, but it, it does uh, it could distract detract from the flavor a little bit. So oh my goodness! This is yeah, that's good. Okay, mm -hmm. here you are. That's good. Mm -hmm. And this last one. Our goat cheese is good to leave out before opening up for a little bit. Yeah. Any cheese. Let it come up to room temperature. It, it, the flavor comes out if it's warmer. Cheeses that are too cold, you're not going to get the, the real benefit of the flavor. This is another bloomy rind. And I love this one because in addition to the bloomy rind, it's, it's aged a little longer. And if you can see how the right under the rind it's almost liquid and so this is a, it's a firmer cheese like the other one in the middle with a liquid around the and that liquid is it's it's all the same cheese that liquid is just from the molds acting on the cheese <laughs> and developing the flavor it's a little runny but i like it runny julia if you ever come to vermont and uh, and stay with me i will will you have nightmares <laughs> no 
If you ever stay with me, we will eat cheese every day and drink wine every day and knit and have fun. You know Vermont's state motto is eat cheese or die, so mm. you have to. <laughs> mm. Oh my. That's like eating butter. Yes, you can come, Jenny. Absolutely. Absolutely you can come. We're not vegans though, so. But we'll try and accommodate. Now, um, the next wine that we're going to talk about is, let me show the bottle real quick, is Miranda Golden Botrytis. This is a 2002 vintage, and it is a dessert wine. When we first got this wine, it was the color of the blade of this knife. It was that beautiful, beautiful um, honey color. Look at it now. This is how, how it looks when it's aged. It's a beautiful, deep amber color. So this is just, I mean, it's, this is gorgeous. It's breakfast time here, a bit early for this. Oh yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Wine is not just for breakfast anymore. That's what uh, Tom likes to say. Mm, mm. So talk about the... Why don't I open this and you can talk about the... the no, it's okay. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 we got cork we got malfunction. Cor we here. got cork malfunction. But, um... Okay, this Miranda Golden Botrytis is from Australia. It's never too early for cheese, that's true. Oh, you're, you're definitely welcome to come. We'll catch you on the replay. Thank you, um, uh, Victoria. I appreciate it. And I'm sorry you guys are having connection issues. Um, bear with us while we get the... Um, this, they, they said they're losing us. I, can you check the connection again? Uh, I shut off what was... Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh my goodness. Now the Botrytis in this name uh, is uh, Botrytis cinerea. It's a uh, mold that grows on grapes as they dry in the vineyards, if you're lucky. Um, because uh, mm -hmm. a lot of wines are made from grapes that are left on the vine until they turn into almost raisins. Uh, the lucky ones have this Botrytis cinerea mold growing on it. And uh, it no, adds, I'm, not, I'm not scared. It, it okay. adds a honey like flavor to it. Now, that brings us back to cheese. Blue cheese and honey is a classic pairing. And so, any uh, dessert wine that has botrytis in it, and that would include sauternes. Sauternes are, are classic uh, botrytis wines. This smells like apricots and honey. It is gorgeous. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. And so, uh, it would also go well with foie gras. Uh, although that's not okay. vegetarian. And so we've got a, uh, it's called Red, White, and Blue. It's a Roquefort-style blue cheese from Vermont. It's, um, Sorry, it's got a little bit of that sharpness that Roquefort has. Um, it's, a, it's a crumbly blue cheese, as you can see. And... Uh, oh, yeah. You can see the... Repeat, repeat the band, please. The band. the band. The name. It's red, white, and blue. Yeah. It's from uh, Plymouth Artisan Cheese in Plymouth, Vermont. And you can see the what they call the veins, and that's where they they uh, they stick something into the cheese that's uh, got the the uh, mold that they're inoculating the cheese with. And the mold grows in inside the cheese as it ages, and that's what gives it that distinctive flavor. It is amazing, Julia. Mm -hmm. It is. It's, this, it's fantastic. This is wonderful stuff. I like to get a piece right from the vein where it's got all that mold. <laughs> it is, Sherry. It's pretty good. Mm. It's like Humboldt fog. Oh, yeah. Hum oh, yeah. It's, that's great stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, and with this wine, it's just, it's amazing. And that is a classic pairing. Mm -hmm. That is just wonderful. So, the, the only problem I have with blue cheeses is there are so many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I want to try all of them. <laughs> um, they're, t they're typically two different textures in blue cheese. You can get a creamy blue or you can get a crumbly blue. Uh, yes, we do. We need a taste scope app. We and do. Uh, uh, within that, 
depending oh. on how the temperature they're aged at and how long they're aged for, you get variations in the, the amount of... It's Miranda Golden Botrytis from Australia. And so you get very sharp Roquefort style cheese like this. You get a milder like a Danish blue or a Maytag blue. Uh, which have kind of a softer uh, taste, so there's a huge variety. You get you get slight variations in the strain of the mold too, so you get some that are more green and more blue. So uh, yeah, that sounds rude. <laughs> that's the way we like our cheese, rude. <laughs> I like cheese that's in your face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, uh, no wimpy cheese. No wimpy cheese for us. So that's what we've got for you today. And I, uh, if you have, if you want any wine recommendations, on the website conniecaps.org/periscope um, near the bottom, there's a link to a spreadsheet called Wines I Recommend, and there's wines from everywhere that that we've had that we really like. And wimpy cheeses for wimps. Yes, <laughs> you need a, a hashtag for that. Um, so if you have any questions, if you have any. Um, Oh, sorry. <laughs> if you have any questions, if you have um, any wine recommendations that you want us to try, any regions or anything like that, let me know and we'll be happy to accommodate if we can. Um, so that's it for today. And uh, join us again next Wednesday at 530 Eastern Time. And um, connection is bad. Watch the replay. Please do. I'm sorry. Um, Scotch drinkers. Oh, oh absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Didn't you, the last time you were here, he did a, a tasting of some scotches. We, we did some whiskeys last time with scotches yeah. and bourbons. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, Jenny. We love you guys, too. Um, what was I going to say? All right, so that's it. Uh, and I'm, I don't know what I'll be trying next week, but I'm sure it's going to be something good. So uh, join me again, and I really appreciate you being here and sharing with your friends and all of the hearts just flowing right there. It really means a lot to me, so... Thanks a lot, and we'll see you again. Enjoy your day, right. and cheers.